Looking for fun? Well, a game of Marco Polo will lead you to this episode if you yell, fish out of water. Kaya discovers some sea creatures that are taking some time out of the sea to visit the hospital. Frank uncovers an awesome someone who's there for you and your family around Lady Salento. And Tori takes the first few steps in her next big adventure. What up guys, this is Cooper here, your host for this episode of Juice TV. Have you guys ever been so when you have felt a bit lost? It's sort of a bit like being a fish out of water. That's what today's episode is all about, a fish out of water. We're gonna see some fish out of water. Well, not fish out of water, but some sea creatures out of water. And we're also gonna be finding a bit more about me later. Let's check in with Kai, who's diving with sea creatures. Joining us today is Richard from Ocean Life Education. My name's Kaya and we have some sea animals for you. What are these called? Well Kaya, these are actually called sea stars. We used to call them starfish, but do you know what? We don't call them starfish anymore, do you know why? Because they don't have a tail and they can't swim. That's exactly right. They don't have a tail. And do they have any fins? No. No? And do they have any scales? No. No? And guess what else they don't have? They don't have any blood. Do you know what they do? No. They pump water around inside their body to keep them alive, not blood. So they were never ever a fish. We've been calling them the wrong thing for a long time. So what do we call them? Sea stars. That's it. Awesome. As you can see, Richard knows a lot about these animals. How does he feel? Is he soft or hard? Hard. Do you know why the sea stars are so hard? To, so then animals can't bite into well, them? Well, it might help them a little bit, but you know what, it's because a lot of sea stars like these ones live in shallow water where the waves crash and bash on top of them. So they need tough bodies to protect them from those waves that are crashing on top of them on the rocks. They're a different colour, aren't they? What colour are these ones? Blue. Do you know why they're blue? Do you think they're blue because they're cold? No. No. Do you think they're blue because they're sad? No. No. Do you think they're blue because they're barrack for New South Wales? Yes. No, but that's a good reason to be sad though, isn't it? No, these ones are blue because they live in amongst the coral reef where there's lots of colourful corals. So then they can blend in and protect themselves? Awesome. What's that called? There's a special word that we use when animals use colours to hide where they live. It's called cam... Camouflage. Awesome. It's called camouflage. So they're using their colour to camouflage to hide amongst the corals. That's why these ones are blue. What do they eat and how do they eat? All right. Now, the sea stars, they eat a lot of different things. Uh, they eat stuff called algae. Algae is like a plant material. Do they eat seaweed too? Well, they might, yeah, might a little bit of seaweed that, that might be growing on the rocks. Absolutely, they will. Do you know how they eat? That's the really weird thing. Do Can I get... show you underneath them? All right, let's have a look underneath. Can you see up underneath there? See all those little orange tube feet? Yeah. That's how they move around, but you see right in the middle? Yeah. That's where their mouth is. Now, what they do is to eat their food, they crawl over the top of their food, and they spit their tummy outside their mouth. They soak up their food across their tummy, and when they've had enough, they suck their tummy back inside their body again. Richard, yes. animal number two. Yep. What are these spiky balls? All right, these spiky ball things, they're called sea urchins. Can you say sea urchins? Sea urchins. Yeah, sea urchins. There's two different types of sea urchins in there, isn't there? We've got this one here, he's called a decorator urchin. And if we get him nice and close, we actually see he's got lots of little tube feet all over his body. All right, so what he does, he gets those little tube feet and they pick up broken bits of shells and corals and rocks and they stick them all over their body to decorate them, which is where they get the name decorator from. And that means they're hiding, they're camouflaged by sticking all that stuff all over them. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. What about the other one? That's called a short-spined urchin. That looks a lot spikier it does look than a lot the other spiky, one. Yeah. Do you know what they use their spikes for? To protect them. Yep, they use them to protect them and they also use them for... Whoa. 
walking along walking. the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, that's what they're for. Would you like to step on one of those? No, it wouldn't be very nice. But they use them mainly to protect themselves from being eaten by fish and sharks. Because they're not going to eat something that looks like that, are they? That would be a bit nasty. So that's what protects him. But they if you look like chocolate balls. Well, they do a bit look like that, don't they? Yeah, you know, like the ones that Mum makes at Christmas time. Do you know what? They eat stuff off the ocean floor as well. Like yeah. the star. Like the sea. sea stars. Yeah, that's right. They eat off the bottom of the ocean. So they also, like the sea stars, clean the ocean floor. Yep. But do you know what? These are different. They've got five teeth underneath them in their mouth, and they're all closed up. And each tooth is about that long, about one and a half centimetres long. So it's basically as long as a shark Well, tooth. you reckon it's as long as a shark tooth? Maybe if it's a little baby shark. But what they do is they crawl over the top of their food, they sense that there's food there, and then these little teeth, they come down out of their mouth and they stab and they scrape the food off the bottom of the ocean. They make a pulpy soup out of it. And then each tooth has a little groove in it and they suck that food, that soup up in the groove into their tummy. That's how they eat. That's a weird way to eat too, isn't it? Are you going to eat like any of these animals tonight? Because it should go in your tummy, not your tooth. Well, that's exactly right, but it goes from the tooth up into the tummy. Did you want to have a touch of them? Oh, come on. Let's do it together. You help me. They're safe to touch. It feels a bit like a hairbrush, like a spiky hairbrush. It's not like I've seen a hairbrush in a long time, but there you go. Is that that's too what spiky? Doing. Yeah, a bit spiky. This one's all right too. Just go gently. He's all right, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. a little bit spiky. A little bit spiky, but safe to touch if we're nice and gentle. Good work. Thanks, Kaya. We'll be catching up more with her later. Let's catch up with Mina to learn a bit more about your host. But first, we need to find me now. Hmm, what better way to do it in a fish out of water episode of I playing Marco Polo? Marco. Polo. Marco. Polo. Marco. Polo. Fish out of water. Ah, got me. Now it's time for quick questions. Meet 11 year old Cooper. He's a massive rugby fan throws his support behind the Cowboys and Broncos and is your awesome host for this episode. My favourite sport is rugby league because it is very fun and active. My favourite movie is Blended because it is funny. My favourite saying is stay in the fight. It is a Cowboys um, call out when they're down on the scoreboard. Stay in the fight! My proudest moment was when I first scored my first try in rugby league. It was when I was running up the sideline and I dived in the corner. If I could have anyone come to my birthday, it would be JT, because he is my favourite person and I've had a phone call from him and I have met him. My favourite song is Queen, We Will Rock You, because it has a nice hard soul beat and I like listening to it. My favourite dance move is the sneaky dab. And my best party trick is the bendy thumb. When it's your first time being in a massive hospital, you can feel like a bit of a fish out of water. Thankfully, Frank knows someone who can help. Hey, I'm Frank. Sometimes you can find yourself in a full-on situation where there's nothing like a friendly face to make things easier. Like, if a giant monster from the Brisbane River came out for something sweet like a cherry cheesecake. I want cheesecake. I want cheesecake. When an alien from outer space see what's happening and try to save us, suddenly ships appear from outer space and everybody's freaking out. Aliens start shooting laser beams at the monsters. The monster roars and strikes back. It's utter chaos. Frank, is everything okay? Oh, yeah. Just got, just got a bit carried away. Thanks. Coming to hospital can sometimes feel the same. A little overwhelming. My sister is an inpatient at Lady Slinto Children's Hospital and has been coming here since late last year. 
My family come in pretty much every day to support my sister, which can be pretty full on sometimes. Which is why distractions can be really helpful. That's how I met Angie. The first time I met Angie, she gave me pizza and tickets to the Brisbane Roll match. That's a pretty good introduction. Angie is not just a friendly face. She's a family liaison coordinator for the Children's Hospital Foundation. So Angie, what does a family liaison coordinator do? Well, Frank, I have the privilege of meeting families who have come into the hospital for a long stay and introduce them to all our programs. So um, tell them about all the fun things that the foundation does with Book Bunker and Bedside Play and we also have cuddle carers. We also organise entertainment around the hospital and I get to um, hang out with the Juice TV crew sometimes as well. <laughs> oh, these may not make it to the blue reels. Trust me. How did you get here? I, have, I was working for another charity before this and I used to come to the hospital with that job and I got to meet all the lovely families and I decided I wanted to come here all the time and um, when a job came up recently I applied and I was successful in the role. What do you love about your job? I love getting to hang out with cool kids like yourself, Frank, <laughs> meeting um, your beautiful families, um, seeing kids' smiles on their faces. Even though they're in hospital, they still get to have a bit of a laugh here and there and that makes me very happy. What has been your favourite experiences? Oh, so many to talk about, but I've really enjoyed the Easter party recently and I'm yep. looking forward to the Mad Hatters. I've got a surprise costume up my sleeve. Um, we've had some Colombian dancers, got to hang out with some footy players, and then last week a little girl who's been here for a long time got to go home and she gave me a present as she left and that was pretty cool. What was the present? It was a handmade love heart with a, um, a little special diamond on it. And she was <laughs> handing them out around the hospital. Do you have any messages to the families or patients that you haven't met yet? Um, hospital can be a bit scary sometimes, but if you look for all the lovely volunteers in their green shirts, they are always there to help you. They can help you find your way. They can help you get some toys if someone's a little bit bored or if they just need um, a little bit of a friendly smile to make them feel better about the day. So try not to be scared and, um, and look out for the entertainment on, around, around the hospital because there's always something fun happening. She might not be able to stop a battle against aliens and monsters. Hey Frank, that's not really true. The galaxy needs me. Well, maybe she can. But her most important work is improving the hospital experience for patients and their families. I'm Frank, bye! you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. I want to share some of the advice what I've learnt in a hospital. Is first, stay positive. Second, don't be negative. Speaking of hospital, we have some more sea creatures visiting. Are these, are these cucumbers? But they don't look like cu normal cucumbers. Well, what, because you wouldn't find them in a salad? No. No, you wouldn't, would you? No, they are sea cucumbers because some of them look like the shape of a cucumber that mum and dad might find at the uh, shop or but grow in the garden. Not, but they're not eating one. Well, not really, but do you know what? Some people do eat these ones. Yep, some countries eat them. This one is a black sea cucumber, or a common sea cucumber. And do you know why he's got that colour? To, so then he can blend in and protect himself. Awesome. What was that word again? Cam? Camouflage. Oh, you're so good. But do you know why he needs to camouflage? So then he, people he doesn't, don't eat it. So, Pete, so he doesn't get eaten by other animals, <gasps> that's right. 
And but he lives next to the rocks, so the rocks are dark, aren't they? So, so then he can blend so in. So he can blend in, yeah. They can camouflage. That's right. But I wonder. Why does he need to hide so he doesn't get eaten? Do you reckon we should touch him to see how it feels first? And we might find out why he feels that way? OK, let's have, let's have a look. How does it feel? Is he hard or soft? Soft. It looks spiky though, didn't it? But it feels soft. So because he's so soft, other animals might want to eat him. So he's using that colour to blend into camouflage so he doesn't get found, so he doesn't get... Eaten. That's it. What about these ones here? These are called sea cucumbers. These are tropical yeah, sea cucumbers. Tropical. Yeah, tropical sea what cucumbers. Are the hairy parts on it? Now these hairy looking parts, do you know what? They're actually part of his mouth. They use those little branches. So then hold. he can eat. So he can eat. And do you know what type of foods he likes to eat? Seaweed. Well, stuff like seaweed, tiny little plants in the water and tiny animals called plankton. Plankton are tiny animals and plants that float around in the water. So he catches them with those branches and then one at a time drags one branch into his mouth and he scrapes off that plankton inside his mouth and then the branch comes back out and then they get the other branch and that comes in and they keep doing that until they've had enough to eat. And you know what? Once they've had enough to eat, they drag all their branches inside their body and you don't even get to see them. Can I tell you something really weird now? The mouth end is only for eating food. Do you know what that means? It means they breathe through their bottom. That's that, that, that's that part there. See that bright orange colour? Do you know what that means? No. It means stop, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. <gasps> poisonous means we don't put it in our mouth. So he's using that colour as a warning. Stop, don't put me in your mouth. If you do, I might make you sick or kill you. But they're safe for us to touch because the poison, you have a touch again, the poison's on the inside of their body. The only way it could hurt us is if we tried to chew it. Are we going to try and chew it? No. No. This is a final animal. And what is he? Bob the baby. Brown. Brown. Bandage. Bandage. Bamboo. Bamboo. Shark. Shark. That's a lot of bees, isn't it? Much more. He's just sitting there a bit quiet, isn't he? Why is he being nice and quiet? Is he lazy? Yes, and so... Yeah? So then people don't think he's alive? Well, I, it, it could be a good a one good way because he might be sitting still so he doesn't make attention so animals don't look for him to eat him. But do you know what? He's not lazy, he's nocturnal. Can you say nocturnal? Nocturnal. What, do you know what that word means? It means he sleeps during the... Day and he, and he is awake during the time. He moves around and looks for his food at night time. He eats foods like crabs and shellfish and prawns. So those animals move around at night, so he rests during the day and he moves around at night time. That makes sense, doesn't it? Why can't I hold Bob? And why can't you, well, that's a good or question. Pat yeah, Bob. that's a good question. Why can't you hold or pat him? It's because Bob has very powerful crushing teeth. He lo those foods that he eats, they've got hard bodies on them. If we put our finger in there and try and give him a pat, he might think that your finger looks a little bit like a prawn. He might make a mistake and go on your finger, and that would really hurt. It'd be a bit like having your finger hit with a hammer. That's how strong his teeth and jaws are. My dad has done that before. And has he hit his finger with a hammer? Well, then he knows what it's like to be bitten by Bob. I hope you enjoyed seeing all our underwater friends. My favorite was the shark because it's really cool. See you next time. Thanks, Kaya. We're going to catch up with Tori now, who's been a Juice TV host just like me. And she interviewed the world-famous Dynamo, who appeared on the show. This next story, though, is the biggest step in her journey yet. Hi, my name is Tori. Today, you'll join me as I take a giant leap in my hospital journey. I'm ready to transition over to the Mater Hospital as an adult patient. I know it's only across the road, but I'm feeling a little anxious as I'm facing the unknown. 
I have been coming to the Children's Hospital for as long as I can remember. I have slow transitioning bowel disease, which means my bowels don't work as well as they are meant to. So I regularly go and see the stoma nurses and the gastro doctor as I have a tube in my lower stomach. Luckily, I've got the support of a few important people as they help me transition. What exactly is your job at the Lady Salento? I am working in the role of nurse navigator for transition. And what that means is I help children who have multiple teams involved in their care who are ready to transition over to adults. And how I come in is I help them link in with all their adult specialists I support the families whenever they need it. And I'm, I suppose I'm a key contact. So I'm the person, the go-to person, in between your leaving the children's hospital and entering the adult's hospital. What are the main differences of being a patient at the Lady Slinter and at the MARTA? So the biggest difference is when you go along to see your adult specialist, he very much talks to you as opposed to talking to your parents. So it's all about you and your care and making sure that you understand all about your condition and you're prepared in, um, in a supportive way. The biggest difference is it's very much you who come along. But saying that, you are entitled to bring a friend or a family member. I'd like to introduce you to one of the other people that has been look who has been looking after me for the last year and a half. This is Helen. Hey, Tori. She looks after my tube and my stomach and she makes sure that I take my medic medication to help me. OK, Helen, you've known Tori for a while now. Is there anything you need to tell me that I need to be aware of? <laughs> One thing definitely about Tori is that she always, always asks lots of questions and they're really pretty good questions to be asking, which I think you sort of forget that kids will throw these at you sometimes. She obviously is someone who thinks about these things. She's a school captain. I remember when you came in and told us and that was a really proud moment for you. Um, they've also, her dad's also made up a really fantastic certificate for kids who are having um, procedures with us. So um, she takes a bit of an interest in, in other kids who are also, you know, going through this sort of stuff. Obviously I get on really well with the nurses here. What are the nurses like at the MARTA? The nurses at the MARTA are really lovely nurses and they are just as fun and can be just as friendly too. Um, they also recognise that you have some, you know, apprehensiveness feelings about going over there. You, they recognise that and they try and make you at ease. And what we try and do as well, before you completely leave our system here in the paediatric system, we try and get you to introduce to, at least to the adult specialists and their nurses. What's the best advice either of you could give me? I would definitely recommend that you already start pre-planning. So you know the way often you like to keep a journal and write yeah. things down, that's a really good idea to keep that going because what you'll find is you might think of a question but you might not remember it when you get to meet your adult team over the, at the Marta. Um, I'd probably just say keep asking the questions that you ask because I think it really does keep you involved in your healthcare and you know now that you're getting older that that's really important for you. And um, the other main thing is keep taking your medication <laughs> and that keeps you healthy and you don't run into problems. I'm really going to miss this place. I want to thank the volunteers for all their time and effort. You have really made a difference to me and a lot of kids. But there's one very special person that I've known for 14 years and I'm really going to miss them. Hey Tori, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, thanks. Doctor, you've been a very special person in my hospital journey. Can you explain exactly what you do here? Okay, so I'm a paediatric gastroenterologist. It's a very long term to say that I'm actually a paediatrician, but I specialise in looking after children with tummy problems. So anyone with any bowel problems or liver problems or pancreatic problems, they're the sort of kids that I actually look after. Once I've made my transition over to the MARTA, who's going to look after me? At the MARTA, they 
they have a special um, clinic for teenagers and young adults. And so be one of the gastro doctors over there because obviously with your bowel problems, you'll still need to see a gastro doctor, but it'll be a doctor that has an interest in teenagers. Do you have any advice for when I transition over at the Mata? Okay, make sure you remember to tell the doctors yourself because sometimes they don't even let your mums and dads come in, so they'll ask you. So it's up to the teenagers to remember to tell the doctors what's wrong with them. So Tori, because you've come so far and you're now so much more grown up and ready to transition, I think you'll be really good when you go over there. So I'm actually going to present you with a little certificate Thank to you. say that you're ready to go and that Thank you're all you grown so up. Well done, Tori. Thank you so much, Dr. E, for looking after me for all these years. It's been a pleasure. I guess there's only one thing left to do. I've done my research, I've got my ready to go certificate and I'm feeling a lot less anxious about what's to come. Thanks for coming on this journey with me, I'm Tori, bye. All the best with the rest of your journey, Tori. Speaking of journey, but Juice TV host journey has come to an end. Before I go, I'd like to shout out to the Broncos. Go Broncos! Until next time, peace people, I'm Koopa. What up guys? Oh. <laughs> like. No. Cool. <laughs> that was good, that was good. Like a duh. Oh. <laughs> then aliens come from space to do. <laughs> I just got a bit carried away. Thanks, Ange. Wait, what? Is it Angie? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's only next, um, across the, oh god, we'll do that. <laughs> Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode. Let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.